Hello everyone and welcome back to another a very beautiful interactive chess game from the history of chess and in this chess game we have the legendary Harry Nelson Pillsbury with the white pieces and his opponent was Samuel Bampton who had the black pieces and he was like a chess prodigy at that time Samuel Bampton uh, he became the chess champion of the chess club of Philadelphia for seven times he became the junior chess champion of the Philadelphia Chess Club for dominating seven times. So he was a chess prodigy, a, a pretty strong, talented chess player. But in this chess game, his opponent was no other than the legendary Harry Nelson Pillsbury himself, who had the white pieces. So this chess game was played in 1897. And this was from a chess tournament between the New York Chess Club and the Chess Club of Philadelphia. So basically Samuel Bampton was representing Pennsylvania and Harry Nelson Pillsbury was representing New York. So let's see what happened in this very instructive chess game between Harry Nelson Pillsbury and Samuel Bampton. So Pillsbury starts the game with e4, we have d5 by Samuel Bampton. So actually this is the Scandinavian defense which is interesting. E takes on d5, a very aggressive reply by black. It is not considered as a very strong opening for black, but it is at least very aggressive. And it also avoids some theory. So queen takes on d5. So if you don't want to memorize a lot of theory, you can actually play the Scandinavian defense against e4 because that's you don't have to memorize tons of stuff. And that's also pretty aggressive at least so knight to c3 defending the queen queen to a5 and then d4 so in this position actually knight to c3 is one of the most played moves perhaps the most played move by far for white so in this position a black has few options queen to a5 queen to d7 and queen to d8 are the three most played moves so Bampton played queen to a5, defending the queen, and then d4 by Harry Nelson Pillsbury. c6, bishop to d3, quickly developing the pieces, bishop to g4, and Pillsbury castle. So e6, bishop to f4, and knight from b to d7, queen to d2, bishop to e7, and knight to g3. So in this position, black actually played a waiting move, black played bishop to h5 basically this was not a very strong move but it is also not losing of course so in this position knight takes bishop is possible uh, but Pillsbury preferred rook from f to e1 and centralizing the rook and only then Bampton castled and it is white to move uh, well in this position Pillsbury played a surprise move he played rook to e5. What a move by Pillsbury, throwing the rook into the fire. And we have c5, not capturing the rook. Well, in this position, you can see that this is forking the queen and the bishop. And if black doesn't react, a capturing the bishop is possible after defending the queen. But black played c5. Let's check out what happens if knight takes on e5. Then d takes on e5. Capturing back with the pawn is very important. So after defending the knight, capturing the bishop, and white has two pieces for the exchange for the rook. So this is actually, this is considered as a pretty good trade. And white is doing okay. And in this position, you might also ask what happens if queen to b6, then basically knight takes on h5. And of course, if knight takes knight, then simply rook takes knight, which is out of questions. White is a piece up. And in this position, if knight to e5, knight takes rook, then in between move, knight takes knight with check, and then capturing the knight with the pawn, and white is much better in this position. So, okay, let's check out what happened in the real chess game after castling rook to e5, and then c5. And Pillsbury simply captured the bishop, and then knight to g4, uh, an interesting move in this position is uh, simply knight takes rook is possible but then we are going to have a similar continuation that I demonstrated uh, in the possible continuation so we have knight to g4 
so you might say okay let's take the rook then in between move capturing the knight bishop takes and then capturing the knight and white has two extra pieces uh, for the rook and also white has the better position you can see that white is much more active uh, so in this position knight to g4 and then Pillsbury played queen to e2 uh, which is not uh, illogical it is okay white is fine but in this position actually uh, after knight to g4 the two strongest moves are knight to d5 or uh, rook to e4 are the two strongest moves uh, this is not me saying this of course this is what the computer chess engines told me uh, this is the engine says so in this position we have queen to e2 giving up the rook so a uh, knight to d5 is actually a pretty strong move attacking the queen so if queen takes queen then knight takes bishop with check and after moving the king only then capturing the queen and who is better of course white is better uh, uh, actually white is much better so knight takes rook pawn takes and you can see that white is doing okay so it is getting a little bit complicated actually uh, so what happens if this move then it looks like knight is getting trapped but i think this move is pretty strong maybe this then we take he takes we take knight take bishop take okay so <laughs> this is actually getting checkmated so i'm trying to figure out uh, I don't know what exactly happens, but this is what computer engine told me. So queen to e2 anyway. So it's getting a little bit complicated, as you can see. If his was a complicated man, so knight from g takes on e5, and then d takes on e5. So giving up the rook, g6. But I think in this position, his should have considered rook to e4. But this is still. Uh, better for white white is slightly better in this position and black has to be very careful in this position now it is black to move can you see why black has to be very careful in this position uh, can you see the immediate threat that white has in this position which is not very obvious it is not easy to see so what would you do Well, black played g6, but okay, uh, let's play a random move. Then can you see the next move for white? The move is queen to e4 and threatening checkmate. So if g6, then queen takes on b7, attacking the knight. This is skewering the knight and the bishop. So if defending, actually this is very tempting. Then knight to g3 and white is significantly better in this position white is much better so in this position let's play a more active move let's say developing the knight then still queen to e4 threatening checkmate and after g6 queen takes on b7 and attacking the bishop so if defending then knight to f6 and white is much better so if capturing capturing back and the f pawn is also looking very dangerous so okay in the real chess game we have d takes on e5 and this is why bantam played g6 the seven times chess champion uh, of the chess club of philadelphia uh, when he was young so knight to g3 knight goes back by pillsbury defending so basically pillsbury has two minor pieces against the rook so rook over rook to e1 a6 so they played few moves and after c4 actually Bampton is cracking because of playing with Pillsbury. He made a blunder. Now watch this. Queen takes on e5 by Bampton. And can you see why this move was a blunder? Uh, did you see the reason? Well, basically in this position, <laughs> can you see that deep? I don't know, but actually in this position, the rook is getting trapped <laughs> can you see half it is white to move and win Pillsbury played queen takes on e5 what else knight takes on e5 rook takes knight rook takes on d2 
and it is white to move and win. Pillsbury played bishop to d3, trapping the rook, and this is all over. So Bampton didn't see this, and this is just simply game over. The rook is in lockdown, and there is no defense, so black can't defend the rook. We have bishop to b4, trying bishop to b4, and then a very precise move, rook to e1, and you can see that the knight is coming, knight to e4, or knight to f1, and winning the rook, so rook over, and then knight from g to e4, capturing the knight, and Pillsbury captured back, and after this move, black resigned. Bampton resigned, because this is basically losing the rook. So let's play a few more moves. King over, and actually uh, you might say knight to b1, or knight to e4, uh, and winning the rook, but actually this move is much more precise, because after f5, king over, stepping to e1, so king to e1, and it is too late, capturing the rook is next, if pushing the pawn. So rook takes is the best try for black, but unfortunately black is a piece down and white is easily winning. So, okay, this was the interesting and little bit complicated chess game of Pillsbury against, the, against one of the uh, big cats of the chess club of Philadelphia. Pillsbury was representing New York and I don't think he lost too many games in this tournament, but unfortunately there are not so many games which is recorded from that tournament uh, in the database, so this is one of the only survived chess game from that tournament, at least this is the only game that I have managed to find. Uh, an interesting tournament, uh, a chess tournament between the New York Chess Club against the Chess Club of Philadelphia from 1897. Uh, so okay, uh, I hope you have enjoyed watching this chess game, so basically White is a piece up and black is losing. So Pillsbury was such an opportunistic, a crafty and also a very smart chess player. Uh, you can see that he basically outplayed, outsmart and outclassed his opponent. This is what I have to say. So, okay. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.